Hey everyone, David here, your trusted mechanic with over two decades of hands-on experience. Today we're tackling something that keeps coming up in my shop, engine break-in. Last week we had some fun talking about tire shredding and pushing cars to their limits. But today we're going to dial it back and discuss something equally important, how to properly care for a brand new engine during those crucial first thousand miles. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. David, modern engines don't need braking in anymore. Well, let me tell you about what I saw just last week. A customer brought in a barely one-year-old vehicle with excessive oil consumption. When we dug deeper, we found out they'd driven it hard from day one. Those cylinder walls told the whole story. Improper break-in led to poor ring sealing, and now they're looking at some expensive repairs. Let's break this down in a way that makes sense. Think about a new pair of leather shoes. Sure, they're perfectly manufactured, but they still need time to conform to your feet. Your engine's components work the same way. Those piston rings need to properly seat themselves against the cylinder walls. Your camshaft needs to establish its relationship with the lifters. Every bearing surface in that engine needs to find its sweet spot. Here's the real deal about engine break-in, broken down into three crucial phases that I've proven work time and time again. Phase 1, the first 500 miles. During this period, your engine is like a newborn. It needs constant attention and the right kind of care. Here's exactly what you need to do. First, forget about cruise control. I mean it. Your right foot needs to be actively involved. Why? Because varying engine speeds is crucial. Think about it like this. Those piston rings need to move up and down the cylinder walls at different speeds to wear in properly. When you use cruise control, you're basically having your engine do the same exercise over and over. That's not how you build strength and flexibility. Keep your RPMs between 2,000 and 4,000. Going too low, we call this lugging the engine, puts excessive stress on those fresh components. Going too high before they're ready can cause premature wear. Mix up your driving between city and highway, but don't stay at any constant speed for too long. Phase 2, miles 500 to 1,000. Now we're entering what I like to call the teenage years of your engine. It's starting to find its groove, but still needs guidance. During this phase, you can gradually, and I mean gradually, start introducing more varied loads and slightly higher RPMs. But here's the key. Still no extended highway cruising at the same speed. Your engine components are still established their working relationships. Phase 3, beyond 1,000 miles. This is where things get interesting, and where I see a lot of people make mistakes. Yes, your engine's ready for more regular use, but there's something crucial you need to do first. Something that could save you thousands in repairs down the road. Let's talk about that first oil change. Now, pay attention, because this is important. That factory fill oil in your engine? It's special break-in oil designed to allow controlled wear during the break-in period. But here's what most people don't realize. It's now holding all those tiny metal particles from the break-in process. I'm talking microscopic bits of metal that have worn off as your engine components seated themselves. This is why I absolutely insist on changing the oil between 500 and 1,000 miles. Regardless of what your owner's manual says about extended oil change intervals, I've seen the difference this makes firsthand. When we drain that first oil, it's like looking at a history book of your engine's break-in period. All those metal particles tell us how well the break-in went, but more importantly, we want them out of there before they can cause any damage. Now let me address something I hear a lot in my shop. But David, my friend never did any of this and their car runs fine. Look, I get it. Some people win the lottery too, but I wouldn't base my retirement plan on buying lottery tickets. What we're talking about here is optimizing your engine's lifespan and performance. I've rebuilt enough engines to see the difference between ones that were properly broken in and ones that weren't. Remember how in our tire shredding video we talked about pushing your car to its limits? Well, think of break-in as building the foundation that makes that kind of performance possible later on. You wouldn't start training for for a marathon by running 26 miles on day one, right? Same principle applies here. Here's what proper break-in gets you. Better compression, which means more power and better fuel economy. Reduced oil consumption throughout your engine's life. Proper sealing of all engine components, lower emissions, and better overall performance. Significantly extended engine life. One more thing before I wrap up. Keep an ear out for any unusual sounds during break-in. Your engine should run smoothly and quietly. If you hear any knocking, ticking, or other unusual noises, don't wait. Get it checked out immediately. These early Early hours are when problems are easiest to fix. I know this might seem like a lot of work, but trust me, I've seen the results of both proper and improper break-in thousands of times over my career. These first thousand miles are your one chance to get it right. You can't go back and redo engine break-in, but you can get it right the first time. Got questions about your specific engine or break-in concerns? Drop them in the comments below. I read every comment and try to help where I can, and if you found this information helpful, consider subscribing. We've got plenty more real-world automotive knowledge coming your way. This is David, reminding you that every mile matters, but none more than the first thousand. Take care of your engine, and it'll take care of you. I'll see you in the next video.